important reminder. All information and ideas are for informational purposes only and are in no way intended as medical advice or as a substitute for medical counseling. Earthshift Products, Dr. Robert Kassar, all of their partners, affiliates, and subsidiaries will not be held accountable for the use or misuse of the information presented therein. This information is not intended as medical advice. The authors, publishers, and speakers of this work are not medical doctors and do not recommend the use of mineral deficient foods, drugs, or medicines to achieve beauty and to alleviate health challenges. Because there is always some risk involved, all persons involved with the development and distribution of this information are not responsible for any adverse effects or consequences of any kind resulting from the use or misuse of any suggestions or procedures described on our website or Earthshift Live radio talk show or therein. <clears throat> Parasites. Look at the teeth on these critters. If you think that you're going to try to kill that thing, that's not too smart. Okay? These are your children. They take five cycles to be able to... Let's go over the cycles very quickly. You swallow a small little egg the size of maybe a millimeter, which is a tiny, tiny little, tiny little piece of sand. You swallow it. It goes into your intestinal tract. It passes the, the, the gut wall, uh, the, the, the stomach. It goes into the first 12 inches of the intestinal tract and matricates and bores a hole into your small intestine and goes into the bloodstream, swims to the liver, this little thing. Smart? Super smart. Swims to the liver, has a bunch of babies. Once it's had enough babies in there, goes back into the bloodstream. Swims to the brain, puts a bunch of babies in there. Hmm? Goes from there, swims and goes into the gonads, testes. Okay? The buddhic transitions, if you go ahead and look at them, and say, when you eat a piece of flesh, you get worms in your testes or your ovaries, your heart. Ever heard of heartworms? 50% of the people in this room have them. Got brain worms? 50% of the people in this room. And I'm being nice, probably more. If you had a piece of flesh, most likely you have them. So, you know, once you get these things, they're not leaving too easy. All you do is look up uh, heartworms on people. Remember, these are like things you get in dogs. You got a dog, you got, the, you got the dog tapeworm. You got a cat, you got the cat tapeworm. What do you think? They're like their owners. The owners like them. The <coughs> parasites like each other. Let's say I've, I have the Fossilopsis buski in my liver. It's only a male. And this guy's got the female. And I don't even really like guys at all. I mean, I like them as friends, but they're not sexual. But my, my liver, the parasite, says, hey, we're Aphrodite back and forth, and we're liking each other, but we really don't. But for some odd reason, there's this weird energy. And it's not because most of the sexual activity of people has nothing. Once you get rid of your parasites, most of the sexual activity you have is, is not what you think. You've been controlled by a parasite. You think a 40 or 50 year old man messes around with a 12 year old child. Okay? It's because the giant schistosoma puts you under the spell. Okay? And once you have your orgasm, you go, whoa, what did I do that for? And that's why a lot of those guys kill the children after that. It's because they can't believe what they did. How about it gives you back your mind? It's pretty weird. It's an uninfected host. There's very few people that are uninfected. So these are the things right here. These are pretty ugly machines, and they're very genius. They're called the reptilian parasites. Okay. Let's go to the next one there. Now we're getting to the good part here. That is real. Talk about the alien. Don't you try to kill it. Bad mistake. I'll tell you that part. Not in my opinion. I know this is true. If you try to, try to fight this thing, you think they got alien from? Huh? You think the alien is? Guys, quit looking outside for extraterrestrials. How about look inside and go for the intraterrestrials? They live inside this machine. And they're your children. Sort of like a face mama only loves. <laughs> we have coined the name of the parasite, the intraterrestrial aliens. I have a book I'm putting together about this. These aliens are reptilian in nature. They live inside our warm bodies and manipulate our warmth. They manipulate our nervous system. They manipulate our everything that we couldn't believe. Remember, if, you're, if you don't like what I'm saying, it's only because what lives inside you says, don't listen to that guy. He said, mm. okay, you'll see, this is true. They need to feed off of a source of energy. And they feed off of our energy inside us. Most of them just live inside our energy and they suck like this. They are species of energy vampires. Some suck blood. Some do cleanup. 
Remember, they're not all energy vampires. Some of them actually are worthy only because we're dirty and they clean us up. Earthworms are in our stomach. Earthworms on the ground are the same ones in our stomach. What do the earthworms do to the ground? They purify it, don't they? And if we've got a just dirty intestinal tract, that's why you don't kill anything, because a lot of the things that live inside us are still good. You, you shape-shift them and change them. All warm-blooded creatures are their premier host, because they're cold-blooded. They don't go in cold-blooded things. That's why a lot of snakes and reptiles, they don't have too many parasites. Why? Because parasites live in cold-blooded stuff. Not too easy. They like the warm-blooded stuff. Let's go to the next one there. Huh? Parasites are all different sizes. From the micro to micro, like we talked about, to the female roundworm, which is really, really weird. Here's the cat tapeworm. Every cat that you see has a tapeworm of about 15 feet in its stomach. That's about five years old. Every, every one. I know it's a little impossible. All you got to do is you can feed it. Uh, you can make it throw up. There's a lot of things on the end. Put cat tapeworm and put throw up. You see these people, they feed them certain types of, uh, uh, you know, you have a horse. Do you warm your horse? Do you warm your dog? How come you don't warm yourself? They're all mammals. Okay? Look at the intestinal hookworm. Check out that thing. It's got spikes inside and it sucks blood. And not only does it suck blood and take, why do you think this machine takes a, a million red blood cells a second to stay alive? Every second it takes a million red blood cells to make just for this machine to stay alive. Because there's little microbes in there that eat these fresh microbes, these fresh little, little uh, red blood cells. So if you get rid of a lot of this stuff, you can see regeneration is really different when you don't have all these pests. We grow f plants, and I know Glenn's been playing around. Why do you grow, why does the, the, the lodestone, why does it make the plants grow better? Because the parasites don't like the energy. It pushes them away. Okay? I mean, in my house, I have uh, palm trees that are like 70, 80 feet tall growing in water. And uh, I use energy to make them grow. And they don't actually grow any better or worse. They only grow because the parasites aren't kicking their rear end all the time, eating them and causing them the distortion all the time. They can actually grow like they're supposed to instead of actually fight off these guys going, get away from me. Let's go to the next one there. You can see, here's nematodes. I kicked out about 60 out of me, shaped like an S, with a little pointy nose on this side and a pointy nose on this side, shaped like a weird S. I bagged them all for people. Did I ever show you mine in my bags before? I didn't know you before then. <laughs> Check out this stuff that comes out of people. Long serpent. You had them in the freezer, right? Oh, I had them in the freezer then, okay. Yeah, I used to show them to people and I'd put uh, formaldehyde or alcohol and show them and say, guys, and people step back, oh, you're sick. And I said, yeah, so are you. <laughs> Remember, the, the stomach, if you have a belly this big, this thing, the body fat, I used to, you know, part of going to medical school is you, you're doing a lot of, uh, of, of looking inside bodies. And so when you cut open the flesh, it's only about, even on a really big, big person, it's only this thick. That's it. So then you pull that back and then all the rest of that bloat is the 40 feet of intestinal tract full of creatures. It's usually this big and that tube's that big full. Remember, John Wing, they pulled out how many pounds of junk out of his intestinal tract in his autopsy? 40. Try. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next one there. Huh? Roundworms, the fish tapeworm, the pork tapeworm. Okay? Yo, baby, yo, intestinal plaque creatures. I pooped out pounds of these. Pounds of these. Wow. <laughs> uh, I was doing the killing thing before. You don't kill these things because if not, then what happens? You will get sick. And the older you are, the more chance you take of these things going, who do you think you are? I own you, you blasphemous. I'm your child. Why would you try to kill me? And what happens is if you try to kill them, they'll turn around and kick your ass and kill you. That's stage four cancer. Mm-hmm. Think of it. What do you think stage 4 cancer is? It's because you cut, burn, and poisoned. You went against nature. Instead of saying, let me push you on to somebody else because you're my child. You went to the doctor, he says, I'm going to cut it, burn it with radiation, and poison you with chemicals. Okay? Instead of terrain modification, instead of oxygenation, instead of deacidification, instead of remineralization, instead of rehydration, let's terrain modify the body and make it smart. This makes sense once you go ahead and look at it. Go to, the, go to VIP. My mom just went through the suffering death. Okay? 
suffering. And I talked to the head oncologist. He's got a belly out to here, okay? And he's the head oncologist. He's the cancer man. And because we have VIP insurance. My dad donated like $50,000 to him one time or something because they saved, he took, had a tumor this big, tapeworm bill. It's, a, it's a, uh, a ball. He had an intestinal hole in his intestine. And what happens is the tapeworm usually makes eggs in the intestinal tract. But what it did was it made it inside and made an egg nest inside the intestine, outside the intestinal tract, inside his body, the size of a coconut. Okay? Uh, I think it's called a sclero something, whatever it is. And they took it out, and there was millions of eggs in it. Millions of eggs. So these things here, if you killed the handful of roundworms in your, in your stomach right now, what do you think would happen to you? These are flesh critters. Okay? If I, I have a pond in my backyard and have all these fish and all these different you know, things that swim in the water, and if I took 10,000 fish dead and I threw them into the lake, what do you think would happen to all the live things? It would kill them. Because the lake would have to process this death. And so that's what neurotoxicity is or Herxheimer's syndrome, is when you kill too many things and doctors go to jail every year for doing this. Putting, that's why you don't do in these colon cleansing, killing with Cascara Sagrada. I don't, I don't think that's smart. All you're doing is pissing off everybody inside you. You're getting rid of the low-level little guys that live in apartments so you can make room for the dudes that live in ranches. That's not smart. At least go ahead and keep them all so they're at bay. The little guys are living with the big guys. You wipe out all the little dudes. All you do is say, huh, now there's a new sheriff in town. I'm bigger now. And if you try to hurt me, huh, I own you. Let's go to the next one there. Okay, this is the Ascaris lumbricoides life cycle. Okay, check out that thing. Look at each segment is a hermaphrodite. It has both male and female organs. It don't need a mate. It's its own mate. That's why it doesn't need any other. But there's other microbes inside the body. That's why half the sexual activity is you guys swapping spit. That's why they say swapping whatever. You know what I mean? And then once you actually got your microbes under control, you don't like each other anymore. Huh, okay. It's not the relationship, it's everybody's happy. <laughs> All they wanted to do was find a mate inside the body. I don't need you anymore. And this is the reason being why a lot of people go through all these separate mates and all these things all the time because there's certain exotic species of, of microbes and all they're looking for is other exotic species to mate with. What do you really, do you really think that you're attracted to this person? Or how about Aphrodite is not you, but it's the snake that lives within. And once it's satisfied and found a mate, it doesn't need it, and then finds, tries to infect another host. This is a very smart, smart alien. Uh, let's go to the next one there. 